Hello kids, this video is about completing the square. Okay, so here we have a standard quadratic. Um, this is in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. And we know that these cross the y axis, I mean the x axis, these cross the x axis when y is equal to zero. And so when we solve um, a quadratic equation, we call it finding the roots or finding the zeros or finding the x-intercepts. And so far, we've talked about graphing, and you can find the roots by looking at your graph. We've talked about um, factoring, and then you can set each factor equal to zero and solve. Uh, even though um, we'll be learning it tomorrow, supposedly, I know you guys probably already know the quadratic uh, formula. That's another way you can solve. And what we're going to do today is learn how to complete the square, which is just another way that you can solve these equations. All right, so let me explain what completing the square even means. So here we have a square. We have x squared, so that means it's a square with sides x and x. And we're going to add bx, so that means we have a rectangle with sides b and x. Now what we can do is take that rectangle and split it in half. So we've got half of b here half of bx, and then this is also half of bx. And if we add those two to this uh, square, this x squared that we've already got, then we almost have another perfect square, but we're missing one little, piece, one little piece. And so if you think about it in geometric terms, if this square is going to be x plus b over 2 here and x plus b over 2 here, the way to find this little piece, the length, is b over 2 times b over 2, or b over 2 squared. So to complete the square, if I had x squared plus bx already, is to add half of b all squared, and then it will be a perfect square. And let me show you what I mean by a perfect square. All right, let's take x plus 3 all squared. That's a perfect square, because that's a square with x plus 3 and x plus 3. If I foiled this out, I'd have x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9, which is x squared plus 6x plus 9. Okay? Or suppose I had x minus 4 all squared. If I foiled this out, I'd have x squared minus 4x minus 4x, so minus 8x and then negative 4 times negative 4 is plus 16. So when you have a perfect square and you look at it, if this is ax squared and this is bx, if b is 6, 9 is half of b squared. Half of 6 is 3, 3 squared is 9. So if this is your bx, then half of b, negative 8 over 2 is negative 4, squared is 16. This is half of b squared. So to make a perfect square, the last term is always half of the b squared. So for your notes, say for a perfect square, the last term is half of the middle term squared. So in order to make an expression that you've got into a perfect square, just isolate the x squared plus bx part, so anything else you would move over to the other side of the equation, and then you're going to add half of b squared to both sides of the equation, and then you'll have a perfect square on one side, and that makes it something that you can then solve by hand. All right, so let's do an example. All right, so I want to solve x squared minus 4x minus 5 equals 0, and yes, this one is factorable. You could factor this and solve it, but I'm going to use, so I'm going to use this one because it's a nice, clean, pretty one um, to show you how to complete the square and solve instead. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to isolate the x squared plus bx. So we're going to move the negative 5 out of the way. Just moving it out of the way means putting it to the other side. So we're going to say x squared minus 4x, and then leave a space and write equals, and then we add 5 to the other side. All right, so now we're going to take b, which is negative 4, half it, half of b is negative 2, Oops, negative 2, and square it. So if I half the middle term and square it, I get a positive 4. It's always positive, because when you square something, it's positive. So we're going to add 4 here. But whatever you do to the left side of an equation, you must do it to the right side as well. So now I've got x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 5 plus 4. 
And we can factor this because this is a pretty perfect square. This is x minus 2 all squared equals 9, because 5 plus 4 is 9. And so if this wasn't something that we already knew how to solve, we could solve it now in this form, because then we could take plus or minus the square root of the other side, plus or minus the square root of 9, which means we have x minus 2 is positive 3, and we have x minus 2 is negative 3. So we've got x equals 5, and we have x equals negative 1. There are two x values, just like if you were to factor this into x plus 5 and x, um, I'm sorry, x minus 5 and x plus 1. We have our two x values. So that's how you solve by completing the square. Now let's do another example. All right, so here we have negative 3x squared plus 3x plus 4 equals 0. And this one does not factor. It's not factorable. So other than the quadratic formula, you don't really have any way to solve it, except you can use completing the square. And once you practice this a few times, you might find this is your method of choice. It's, um, I like it better than the quadratic formula. That gets a bit um, messy to me. All right, so remember, the first rule is to isolate x squared plus bx. And note, there is no a there. a has to be 1. In this case, we have a negative 3 in our way. So first I'm going to move this 4 over, just like we did in the last problem. Negative 3x squared plus 3x equals negative 4. And I'm leaving a space. I always leave a space because if I'm completing the square, I know I need a place to add that square that I'm going to add in. But before I can complete the square, and this is very important, this is where people will screw up every time, you have to get rid of this negative 3. You cannot complete the square until x squared does not have a coefficient other than 1. So we're going to divide everything, everything, by negative 3. And it only works if you do it to everything, or it's not equal anymore. So now we have x squared, and then 3 divided by negative 3 is minus 1x. Leave a space, equals, and negative 4 divided by negative 3 would be positive 4 thirds. Don't be scared of the fractions. It's okay. All right, now we're going to complete the square. Now the b value is negative 1. So half of b squared would be negative 1 half squared. So think about what happens when you square a fraction. Square the numerator, we get positive 1. Square the denominator, we get 4. We're going to add 1 fourth to both sides of the equation. Make sure you do it to both sides. Oh look, ugly fractions. You're going to be all right. Now we can factor this because it's a pretty perfect square. And if you notice, it always factors to x and then plus b over 2. So in this case, b over 2 is negative 1 half, so x minus 1 half, all squared. That will always be plus b over 2 right there. And then we have equals, and we have to add 4 thirds to 1 fourth. And I'll save you time, it's 19 twelfths. Remember, you get a common denominator, and so the common denominator is 12, or you can do this in the calculator if you're lazy, and you get 19 twelfths. All right, so now it's in a form that you can use to solve. So we're going to take the square root of both sides. x minus 1 half equals plus or minus the square root of 19 over 12 which is ugly, but that's okay. That's why we spent every day last week doing um, warm-ups with rationalizing or fixing radicals because now this is where it becomes important. This is where it matters. I don't want the square root of 19 over 12. I want that to be the square root of 19 over 2 root 3. And then we can multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 3 we get plus or minus the square root of 57 all over 6. And so that is in pretty form. So now to get x, and I'm out of room, so I'm going to scroll up in just a second. To get x, we're just going to take this minus 1 half and add it to the other side. All right, scooted it all up. Now I'm going to add 1 half to both sides, x equals. And then you can put plus or minus the square root of 57 over 6 plus one half. Or if you want to, you can put the one half in front. One half 
plus or minus the square root of 57 over 6. Just don't lose that plus or minus. It has to be there because this is two answers. 1 half plus the square root of 57 over 6, while being an ugly decimal, is a real number. And 1 half minus the square root of 57 over 6 is another ugly decimal, but it's a different number. So we have those two numbers, and that represents, or that is, where this parabola that we started with would cross the x-axis when y equals 0 at those two values. They're just not pretty, but now we, we know exactly what they are. All right, let's do another example. All right, so another thing that completing the square is useful for is to take an equation in standard form and convert it to vertex form. So you don't have to actually find the vertex and all that stuff. You can just take um, your equation and then complete the square, and then it will be in vertex form. So here's what that looks like. We'll start with a simple example. We've got y equals x squared plus 2x minus 8. So the difference between what we were doing before and what we're doing now is we have a y here instead of a 0. We're going to keep y the letter y. But we are going to move the 8 over to the other side. So now we've got 8 plus y equals x squared plus 2x. And then we're going to complete the square. So half of 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. We're going to add 1 to both sides. Sorry, plus, I can't get it to write, plus, <laughs> plus 1. Ha, huh, take that. <laughs> All right. So we've added 1 to both sides. That means we've got 9 plus y equals, and I can factor this now because it's a pretty perfect square, x plus 1 all squared. So then I can just move the 9 back, and I have y equals x plus 1 all squared minus 9. And that's vertex form. Your vertex is negative 1 because it's the opposite of the h, and negative 9, h and k, like that. So this last one that we're going to do, we're going to convert this to vertex form, and it's not very pretty, but that's okay. We're going to move the 4 over, so I'm going to have 4 plus y equals negative 3x squared plus 12x. And then I have to divide everything by negative 3 because we have to get the... Sorry. We have to get the x squared by itself, so I'm going to divide each piece, every single piece, including the y, every single piece by negative 3. So that means I have negative 4 thirds minus y thirds equals x squared, and then 12 divided by negative 3 would be minus 4x. Now I'm set up in the position where I can complete the square. I'm going to add half of 4 is 2 squared is 4. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. Okay, so now 4 minus 4 thirds is 8 thirds, because 4 is um, 12 thirds. 12 minus 4 is 8, so we've got 8 thirds minus y thirds equals, and we can factor this to x minus 2 all squared. Now we'll put the 8 thirds back. We have negative y thirds equals x minus 2 all squared minus 8 thirds. And then we're going to multiply everything by negative 3 to get y back by itself. So that gives us, I'll write it over here, y equals, and then you have the negative 3 in front of the x minus 2 all squared, so that's your a. And then if I took negative 3 and multiplied it by negative 8 thirds, I'd be at plus 8. So that's vertex form, nice and pretty, and your vertex is at 2, 8. And that's it. So that's the end of this video. Have a good night.